Okay, my original goal for this tutorial was to talk about IP classless versus no IP classless um, commands on the routers and their routing behaviors, as well as parent and child routes and the routing table. But I'm going to have to modify this tutorial a little bit because in Packet Tracer, the IP classless and the no IP classless commands are actually not available. So, um, you're not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to show you uh, the classless versus the um, no IP classless or class full behavior of the router. Now if you open up a router and you go to the command line interface and you look at the running configuration file you'll see that by default the routers are already configured to run IP classless so they're already functioning with classless routing behavior. Well well, what does that mean? Okay, so in this network, you can see that over here, that these three networks are have been subnetted. They were originally, let's say, the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network, and they've been subnetted into the 1.0 slash 26 network the 1.64 network slash 26 and the 1.128 network slash 26 now when you subnet a network changing it from slash 24 to slash 26 you end up with four subnets the 0 subnet the 64 subnet the 128 subnet and the 192 subnet but as you can see I'm only using three of them so there's a, a subnet that's not being used. It's the um, the 192 subnet. Okay, um, so that's one thing. So we've got some some subnetted networks here. Now these networks should show up in this router's routing table as what we would call child routes, right? Child routes or level two routes, level two child routes. All right. Now the classful 192.168.1.0 slash 24 is the parent route or the level 1 route. So let's take a look at that right now. So we'll go in here and we'll do a show IP route and you can see the routing table here and we'll talk a little bit about this because it goes with um, with Cisco CCNA curriculum. Um, here for this one network that we have, this 193.168.1.0 network, you can see here there's the parent route. Notice the parent route, it says that it's subnetted. It tells you um, how it's been subnetted up here. It's going to be applied with a slash 26. And you can tell it's been subnetted into three subnets, but notice it doesn't resolve to an exit interface or a next hop IP address, right? So it's what we call it's a it's not an ultimate route so this is a parent route it's a level one route but it is not an ultimate route okay now the children routes the child routes are indented and they're right here okay and you can see the child routes first of all have an indentation right and you can see that you've got the zero the 64 the 128 and it says they're directly connected and they have an exit interface so these are level two routes, child routes, and they're also ultimate routes because they have an exit interface. Okay, now um, this connected route on the 10 network has, is what we call a network route and it has an exit interface. Now these routes um, are also um, have exit interface, they have a next hop IP address, so these are um, level one network routes right these two routes right here level one network routes and they're also ultimate routes alright and we don't have it looks like we don't have a um, gateway of last resort let's let's make one okay so we'll go in here and we'll say conf t IP route 0.0.0.0 and 0.0.0.0 and we'll say to 
10.0.0.2. Okay, so now we've set up a static route to the zero network with a zero subnet mask, and so this is a default route with a next hop address. So now if we look at our routing table, we also have a static route, right, to the zero network with a zero subnet mask. This is an ultimate route. It's a level one route, but it's also a default route. Okay, so now we have that. Now let's watch how, um, now, now that we've talked about these uh, different types of routes in the routing table, let's run a test. Okay, and this test has everything to do with IP classless and no IP classless. Now this router has IP classless um, configured by default, pre-configured on the router by default. And well, what does that mean? That means that the router, when it looks up its routes, and this is the example that I'm going to use, and that is, let's say we were to put this command into into this computer host right here, and we said we want to ping 192.168.1.193, okay? Well, there is no 192 subnet. We talked about how there's a 0 subnet, 64 subnet, and a 128 subnet, but there's no 192 subnet, so there's no 193 host here. Now, with IP classless enabled on the router, which it is, what will happen is the router will look in its routing table, it will recognize the 192.168.1 classful prefix, and it will look for the 193, a match for the 193, which would be a 192 network, and it will look for it, slash 26, in its child routes. And it'll look through these child routes and it will not find a network. And with IP classless, what will happen is, is after it fails at finding the child route that matches with the 192.168.1, it will go back out of the routing table and eventually find the default route out. All right. So if we look at the routing table one more time, it'll look up the route, it'll recognize this, then it will look through these child routes, but it will not find the correct subnet or the correct child route. It'll then go out here and search here, search here, and eventually it'll find this default route with a zero subnet mask, meaning that zero bits need to match. So it'll have a match and it will take the static default route and it will it will take a default route out of the network. Now this is is because IP classless is enabled on the router. Now if no IP classless was enabled on the router, the router would look through these child routes, it would recognize the classful network, it would look through the subnets or the child routes, and if it doesn't find the correct subnet child route, it would just drop the packet. And that is the classful routing behavior, and I'll talk about that more in a second. But we can test this by taking this PC here, and let's try to ping, we'll say, and I'm going to do this in simulation mode and speed it up a little bit. We'll do this here. We'll say ping 192.168.1.193. And we already know that this does not exist on the network. So first of all, as you can see, the router is going to run uh, ARP request because it doesn't have uh, the gateway's um, MAC address in its ARP cache. So we'll get to see that too. So we'll play it. All right. Oh, and there goes the ARP. You can see here the color. So it's running an ARP request trying to resolve the MAC address from the IP addresses of the gateway. And it does that. And now it's sending a ping, right? And if we had no IP classless enabled on this router, the packet would get dropped right now. But it's not. It gets forwarded on the default route. And then this gets sent on the default route the packet, even though there's no 193, it's forwarded on the default route. It's continued, the route is continued to look up in the routing table, right? So, and if we could turn off IP classless and issue a no IP classless command, what supposedly would happen is that ping would hit this router 
the router would not find the subnet and then would just drop the packet. Now why is that? Well possibly because um, in a classful network hierarchy, right, um, there are no discontiguous subnets. There's no VLSM, there's no CIDR if it's purely classful hierarchy. So if you were the owner of let's say the 192.168.1 network, you, there would be no other possibility of that subnet being anywhere else but on your network. So if your router couldn't find it, it would might as well just drop it because there are no discontiguous networks. There is no VLSM or CIDR in a classical hierarchy.